My name is Rosemary Reynolds. I'm a 22 year old law student. Um, and I'm currently in Jamaica studying law at Norman Manning Law School. And I am the co-founder of Youth Today. Awesome. Um, so how long have you been at law school so far? Um, I just started in September. So wow. first year, yes. And now we're in a pandemic yeah. and you're kind of stuck in Jamaica, aren't you? Yes, well, um, recently, as in yesterday, we kind of heard that um, the government is making attempts to get us out. So um, I'm kind of just patiently waiting to see how that pans out. But yeah, I'm stuck in Jamaica for now. <laughs> um, I guess you try to take me back to when the news of this initially was breaking and people were first going into this lockdown mode that we're now it was three weeks in Antigua into. What was it like in Jamaica as a student experiencing this? Well, um, Jamaica recorded its first case um, way before Antigua. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we all heard the news because we were in our lecture and um, all of a sudden everyone was whispering and talking over the, the, the lecturer and she kind of stopped the class and she was like, what is going on? Like, I'm trying to teach. And then someone blurted out like, ma'am, COVID is in Jamaica. So it was a whole thing and the, the whole class like erupted. Um, and I, that was the Tuesday, I think. And by the Thursday, they had canceled classes. They had canceled school. So it was kind of kind of nerve wracking because nerve wracking because we had to still come to class um, for the we still had to remain at school for the Tuesday, the Wednesday, and the Thursday. So you're coming to school and you're just like, and anyone who like sneezed or coughed, you're kind of like looking at them. Yeah, yeah. And I was in a class and because sometimes the rooms would get a little bit stuffy. So it would mess with my allergies. And I was like battling this sneeze. And I sneezed like very quietly. So I'm like, okay, nobody realized. And I was telling one of my friends and her friend was like, I saw you and I was watching you. So everyone it was kind of like, you know, a little agitated. But by the Thursday, I think they recorded their second case. I may be wrong, but they had recorded their second case. And they said, I already made the the determination like I don't think classes are going to happen for the Friday and they sent us an email and said yeah no more classes will be resuming online from the Monday so um, we've unlike UV students who had a break and are now just entering you know online classes we've been doing online classes all this time okay well and so how is that actually going the transition from you know, going to your classes physically to now having to be at home and doing everything. How, how is that for you? Well, the program I'm in, um, we're required to dress a certain way. So it's not really like undergrad where I can just like throw on my sweatpants or, you know, jeans and a t-shirt and just head to class. Mm -hmm. So we're expected to dress kind of like business casual for certain courses. We have to dress like more professional with the suit. So it was a bit of a break in terms of like the get ready process um when you have like 8 a.m classes and you have to be getting up at like 6 a.m to make sure that you're ready and everything so that was kind of a relief but at the same time um doing because majority of our online classes are finished by now um but doing the online classes it took a lot of discipline it took mm -hmm. a lot of discipline um because you know the bed is right here um I'm on my laptop, YouTube is right there, all the social media is right there. So it took a lot because when I'm in classes, you know, I can't necessarily be on my phone all the time um, because, you know, the lecturer is going to give you a kind of look and they're going to make a comment. But when I'm here, like, you know, no one sees anything, no one, you know, so I can do whatever I want. So it was just, it was a bit hard in terms of the discipline and kind of adjusting to that. Mm -hmm. You feel like you have it down now? Um, I think so, because even, even though like I may have like zoned out in one or two classes, um, what I like about this is that the classes were recorded. 
So um, right now I'm in the process of like we going going through over my notes, mm -hmm. and I have you know the opportunity to go over the the recordings, which I would never have the, had the opportunity if we still had face to face lectures. So that is one of the plus about it, and I can just sit and I can go at my own pace. When the lecturer makes a point I, don't, I didn't really hear, I can always go back, I can always pause it, make my notes. So I guess that's a big, that has been a big plus in all of this. Cool. And so what about your family and friends back in Antigua? Have you been able to stay in touch with them? And is everybody doing okay, sort of? And how are you dealing with kind of being disconnected well, that way? Um, my family are... They were pretty, I think they've been pretty like chill throughout this whole process. That's nice. Because, yeah, it, it, it really is nice and it's very refreshing because I was a bit, you know, sometimes I would get a bit um, anxious and a bit agitated. Um, and what I'll just do, I would like call my sister, I would call my mom, speak to my family, and they would just like, you know, kind of calm me down in a way. Um, most of my friends, well, most of my MTV friends that were here have already left. Um, they got to leave before me, but like we've kept in constant communication. I don't think I've ever like spoken to my friends this much. And this is this has been another like plus throughout all of this because like older friends that I've had, like friends that I've had for like 10 plus years, where which we don't really like speak every single day. Like now we're making more of an effort to like connect, reconnect. We talk more, we're expressing ourselves more, and I feel like I've gotten a lot closer with like, you know, my really close friends. So I guess that has been a plus, but they've kept me sane throughout all of this um, because, you know, I can't necessarily leave and socialize and socialize with the friends that I still have here. So um, I'm glad that we have the technology that we can still keep connected. But everyone's fine back home, everyone's keeping safe. Um, practicing social distancing. I remember Antigua is on a 24 lockdown, so it's not really much they can do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad to hear that everyone's doing okay and that they're helping to keep you calm and, and steady as well. Um, what exactly are the, the lockdown or social distancing of parameters that you're operating under in Jamaica right now? Like Antigua is 24 hours, but is it different there? No, it is not 24 hours here. Um, I don't want to say as yet, but I feel it's a as yet kind of situation. Um, there is a curfew in place. The curfew, I think, right now is 9 p.m. Um, over the Easter weekend, they had brought it up to 3 p.m. because, you know, to curtail people from going to the beach and those kind of things. Um, I'm not really too sure like how other institutions have like put the social distancing policy because since um, school was out, the only times I've left my, my room were to go to the supermarket. And I could see the social distancing there. Like there's a tent outside, everyone has to line up. The security guard would come around at a good distance and he'd be screaming like, six feet keep keep separate you know so um i see other businesses have been putting that into place i'm not too sure how it is on a wide scale level um, and the government have you know mandated that individuals of a certain age remain home um, um if you are of a certain age you must wear a mask so it's not it's unlike antigua where everyone has to wear a mask um, it's only those who are of a certain age and those who Let's say you have like a little cough or sneeze that day, or you know you feel like you have a pre-existing condition. Those are the only people they're like mandating to wear a mask. Um, but other than that, it's not on a complete lockdown. But what they've been doing is that areas where there has been an outbreak, they've locked down that parish because remember Jamaica is way bigger than Antigua, so. Um, they recently locked down St. Catherine um, because there was, a out, there was an outbreak at a call center. And majority, I think it was 52 of the employees were tested positive. So the, 
the, um, the amount of confirmed cases went from 73 to like 140 something in the matter of two days. So they completely locked down St. Catherine. Um, no one can get in and out that easily. So that's what they've been doing. They've been quarantining and locking down parishes as it progresses. Right, that's kind of what we're seeing in Europe as well. Damn, well, I hope, I mean, it doesn't get too widespread there and it's good that everybody's taking the precautions that they can. I hope it doesn't, but at the same time, um, because I'm in Kingston currently and what I'm hearing is that when they had, you know, said they were going to lock down St. Catherine, that people were trying to like escape the yes. quarantine. Yeah. So they were coming into Kingston. And I'm just sitting out and I'm like, this makes absolutely no sense because Kingston, I think, has like 50, 50 something cases alone. And you're coming here, like you don't even know what is here, but you don't even know what you have. And you're coming here to bring whatever it is and then infect other persons and make the situation worse. And I'm not too sure if they had found all the employees, but they said that the last time that I checked the news, a um, hundred employees um, were unaccounted for because of you know, missing addresses, things like that. So I'm not too sure if one of the persons who was at the call center was a part of coming to Kingston. Like it's, it's a lot. So I really hope that it doesn't like pan out to what I think it could be, mm -hmm. but, um, but I'm, yeah, I really, I hope it doesn't, you know, get worse, but <sighs> yeah. Yeah, we're all yeah. just, we're all in that situation of just like, yeah. I hope it doesn't get worse I and get we can't worse. do much yeah. except just wait. Yep, and I think what you're doing is a good thing, keeping in touch with family and friends and keeping each other sane and looking out for people to the degree that we can. Mm -hmm. That's all I can do. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your experience. I think that's all on the, the pandemic front. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, we got a good 13 minutes or so. All right. Well, thank you for having me again. This was nice. <laughs> yeah, it's always nice. Have a great day. All right. Same to you. Bye.